A process engineer has a great role in any oil and gas, chemical, or petrochemical project. As his process design determines the cost and schedule of the project operability and safety of the plant shall be determined. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the various stages of process design, from the initial conceptual design to the final startup of the plant. We shall see how each stage affects and is affected by a process design. So let's start. Process design is a central element of any engineering project. It is the blueprint that guides the construction, operation, and maintenance of a facility. A well-executed process design ensures that the plant operates efficiently, safely, and in compliance with environmental regulations while minimizing capital and operating costs. So how is the process design carried out within a project? In the beginning, the process engineer creates the process flow diagram PFD and heat and material balance summary. These shall determine the expected flow rate and physical properties of the fluid, fluid composition, operating pressure and temperature, and plant control. Based on this information, downstream activities can be initiated, such as pipe and equipment sizing, hydraulic activities, equipment and line lists, P and ID, control system logic, equipment protection and shutdown logic, utility and effluent summary, PSV sizing and flare system requirements, and instrument specification process data. The previous activities are very important. This is because the process design shall give the information needed for our piping, instrumentation, and mechanical colleagues to proceed in their detailed activities, such as Plant layout 3D model and pipe isometrics creation based on the P&ID Consider the expected electrical loads needed by our plant Purchase of equipment based on our sizing Purchase of different instruments based on the process data in hand. Purchase of bulk items such as piping, valves, and fittings. And even more other activity. All of them shall be based on process design requirements. We shouldn't forget that engineering company is not working on its own. There are other project stakeholders or considerations such as Client or plant owner who needs to approve the design. They may have their requirements to ensure smooth plant operability, which may impose changes in PFD and control schemes, add more instruments or valves. Vendors of equipment and instruments may need considerations that can change the design. For example, we may find that vendors of a compressor or a control valve cannot achieve the requirements provided by the engineering company. This may lead to a modification in the design. Engineering disciplines, even within the engineering company, engineering issues related to piping or civil works may arise which shall lead to looking for alternative solutions. Safety studies such as HAZAP or SIL may impose more requirements to ensure that the design is considering enough protection for the plant. Each phase represents a level of accuracy in the design. This is important to avoid severe modifications with their consequences related to cost and delay in delivery. That's why it should be understood that the maturity of process design depends on the project stage. So let's shed light on the main project stages. The first step in any process design journey is the conceptual design stage, which serves as the foundation for the entire project. It involves transforming the project's initial idea into a preliminary design that outlines the basic process flow and identifies the major equipment required to achieve the desired outcome. So what are the objectives of this stage? This includes aims, such as Define process requirements such as production capacity, product specifications, and environmental constraints through process simulation. Conduct a preliminary feasibility assessment. Establish a starting point for the subsequent design stages. Provide a basis for decision-making and whether we shall proceed with this project or not. 
Here in this stage, a process engineer typically supplies these deliverables, process simulation. Process flow diagram, PFD. Preliminary equipment list. Initial cost estimate. Here the accuracy of this phase is around plus minus 30 to 50 percent of the estimated budget. So here the flexibility to modifications is high. Following the conceptual design, the project moves into the front-end engineering design feed stage. The feed stage is a crucial step in the process design journey, as it bridges the gap between the preliminary concept and the detailed design that follows. During this stage, the process design is refined and expanded upon, with a focus on optimizing the process flow, equipment selection, and overall plant layout. Let's see the aims of this stage, develop a comprehensive plan for the project. Ensure process flow is efficient and optimized. Identify and assess risks. Lay the foundation for the subsequent detailed engineering stage. Here in this stage, a process engineer typically supplies these deliverables, PFD with a high accuracy. Preliminary P and ID. More accurate equipment list. Equipment and instrument data sheets. More accurate cost estimate. Here the accuracy of this phase is around plus minus 10 to 30 percent than the estimated budget. So here the flexibility to modifications is still high, but less than the conceptual design. The third stage is the detailed engineering stage which is a critical phase in the process design journey, where the final design and specification of all equipment, piping, and instrumentation are completed. Detailed design in itself passes through different stages. For example, in its beginning, we haven't purchased anything yet. We don't have enough vendor data, so there is still some room for changes. Then afterward, haze up and sill sessions are conducted to challenge the design and ensure that the system is well protected, some changes may arise here due to the haze up outcome. We shall then start to receive the data from vendors and incorporate it into our design. Here, we have already purchased the material we need. So changes shall be very limited and, in many cases, not tolerated. Let's talk about the aims of detailed engineering stage, finalize sizing equipment and pipe in addition to hydraulic checks. Incorporate the final data from vendors. Develop a comprehensive 3D model of the plant. Ensure that the final design meets all technical, safety, and regulatory requirements. Here in this stage, a process engineer typically supplies these deliverables, final P and ID. Final equipment and instrument data are now verified by their vendors. Piping isometrics. Completed 3D model. Detailed construction schedule. Here the accuracy of this phase is around plus minus 0 to 10 percent than the estimated budget, depending on which phase we are in. So here the flexibility to modifications is low. Any change here can affect the project cost and cause delays to the project. The detailed engineering stage requires close collaboration among the project team, equipment vendors, construction contractors, and other stakeholders. To ensure that the final design meets all technical, safety, and regulatory requirements. The resulting deliverables serve as the basis for the procurement, construction, and commissioning of the plant. With a focus on finalizing equipment and pipe sizing, hydraulics, and developing a comprehensive 3D model of the plant, the detailed engineering stage sets the stage for a successful construction and startup process. The final stage is the commissioning and startup of the facility. This is where the process design comes to life, as the plant is brought online and begins to produce the desired products. Commissioning and startup form a critical phase of the project that includes ensuring that the plant was constructed as per the design. Verification of control and shutdown loops, that they are well-tuned and their logic is implemented as per the design. 
Carry out leak tests to ensure that flanges are not leaking and hence prepare for startup. Any issues that arise during startup are addressed and resolved, and the plant is gradually ramped up to full production capacity. Fine tuning of operating parameters to ensure that the plant meets its performance targets. Performance testing of all equipment to hand over the plant to the client. Once the plant has achieved steady state operation, the final step is to hand over the facility to the operations team. In conclusion, the process design stages play a crucial role in the successful execution of any engineering project. By understanding each project stage, engineers and project managers can appreciate the complexity and importance of the overall process design. They can identify potential issues early on, reducing the risk of costly errors and delays during construction and startup. And they can work together to ensure that the final plant is safe, reliable, and capable of meeting its performance targets.